Hi, this video is going to basically go over how we can do two sample hypothesis testing in R. Um, so in the previous example, I showed you how we can do one sample t-test in R. And the reason that we did one sample t-test was because we were trying to compare the population mean um, against the constant value. Remember, um, in this video, we are going to uh, see how we can compare two different populations, um, more specifically their means, okay? Um, so again, uh, like in um, the one sample uh, version, um, we are going to be looking at the, uh, the symbol in the alternative, alternative hypothesis, right, H1. And depending on the inequality or equation in there, we are going to call it either two-tailed t-test, like in the two-tailed t-test case, uh, in the alternative hypothesis test, we do have uh, inequality symbol here, right? Uh, it is basically telling us that mu one, the population one mean is not equal to population two mean. Um, and alternatively, the null hypothesis is suggesting that mu1 is equal to mu2, okay? There is no difference between mu1 and mu2, all right? If you reject the null hypothesis, we are going to rule for the failure of alternative one, uh, and that's going to be a strong conclusion. And uh, we do have one tailed or one sided test, uh, depending on the symbol in the alternative. If it is greater than, then we call it greater than one-sided t-test, and if it is less than, we call it less than uh, less than one-sided t, uh, one, less than two-sided t-test. Uh, I'm sorry, two-sample t-test, not two-sided. Uh, two-sided version is this. This is two-sided, two-sample t-test. This is uh, two-sample, greater than one-sided t-test, and the last one is uh, two-sample, one-sided, less than t-test. Okay. So let's take a look at, for example, the last one, and let's try to see what the alternative hypothesis suggests here. Alternative hypothesis suggests that the difference between mu1 and mu2 is less than zero. Um, if you can just put mu2 over here, it is basically saying, telling us that mu1 is less than mu2. And if we fail to reject uh, you know, H0, then we are going to basically say that we are going to stick to the original status quo, which is going to be mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2, okay? If you reject H0, we are going to roll, we are going to rule in favor of H1. And in this case, we are going to say that our data suggests that mu1, the population one mean is less than population two mean. Um, by the way, this zero can be any constant. Uh, this zero can be five, 10, 100, whatever it is. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, that's, why, that's the reason, that's the only reason that I use zero here on the right-hand side of these inequalities. Okay, um, again, the objective here is to be able to make inferences based on the sample that we are given on the populations, All right? So let's see an example. Uh, the A-B testing uh, has been very uh, popular, um, especially in tech industry. Tech companies are using it to see um, if a minor change impacts the bottom line, and they do it all the time. On a given day, they run uh, hundreds, uh, if not thousands of um, A-B tests. Um, and it is literally just by definition uh, is a two sample t-test if you are comparing two different versions of something. If you are comparing multiple different versions against each other, then it, it, is, it can be handled um, by using other statistical means. And when we, um, so it, it can be definitely, I know it can be definitely used in that case. But we're going to stick to the case where we have only two versions. And this version A and version B. So in this example, we do have a little company and they do have many uh, templates, version A versus version B on their websites. And they're wondering which version is going to bring them the most clicks, okay? They do have two different data sets. So in the first type of data sets, the data is unpaired. So in this case, um, they do have unpaired data of 40 customer clicks on version A and 40 different other customer clicks on version B. So they're, um, they're recording. Let me go to the Excel file and show you what it is. If you go to the null Excel file, so Noodle unpaired data set. 
They do have a uh, version A customer ID. They collect customer IDs here. They do have 40 customers. Uh, and then the number of clicks that they made on version A. And there are different 40 different customers here. And their respective number of clicks are also given in this data set. The fact that this data is unpaired is very obvious because you know uh, version A customer IDs are not really same as version B customer IDs. It is indicating that those are different for the different uh, uh, customers. Um, so this data is not paired. So on the second data, the paired data, we do have uh, 40 different customers again, but they do come back and then work on a version A of the internet template that they have, website that they have. And they also work on version B of the website that they have and they collect the number of clicks every time a specific customer comes in, came in and uh, looked through their website, okay? This data is paired because the experiment is conducted on the same um, entity. Um, and what can we give as an example to other paired data? For example, if you are worried about the tire wear um, on the passenger side or the rear side, um, you know, Let's focus on the front side. Let's look focus on the driver side and the passenger side. And you collect some samples and then you run through them, you do t-test. Well, in that case, that is also a paired data because the car is the same car. You look at the, the front left and front right, and you try to see which one is reared out most, right? If that's your problem, for example, that's still a paired data example. So depending on how data is collected, our t-test is going to differ, right? We have to be aware of that fact, okay? So in this case, uh, you are asked to help me make the best decision for the company. Should they uh, still keep using a version A or they, should they just you know, switch into version B? Uh, based on these two experiments, right? And what should be our conclusion? And the alpha is given as 0.05. Uh, first thing first, let's work on the unpaired data and let's try to see whether they are following a normal probability distribution. Um, these are the normal QQ plot I obtained from R and the R file that you're going to be working on on this example is called, uh, there's a two sample t-test noodle. Okay, uh, this is already posted uh, on Canvas. Go ahead and download and make it available to you. So first thing first, I uh, will close this one sample version. I worked on it already. Uh, first, uh, first, first thing first, we are going to uh, import Noodle unpaired into, into R. I'm using library read Excel. I can call it with this code if I know the direct directory. Uh, if not, I am just going to import data set from Excel, locate this file. It is null file, but you have to be careful here. Uh, we do have two different sheets in this, in this file. So I'm going to be selecting noodle unpaired one here. Okay. Um, and it looks correct. And I will go ahead and say import. Um, um, I did something wrong here um, because the instructions were telling me to save it as noodle unpaired, but I imported it as noodle, okay? So I will just put this eraser or sweeper button here, get rid of this data frame I just imported. I will do it one more time. I will change the name. Um, here I will select noodle Excel file, make sure that I select noodle unpaired and make sure that I change the name. So the name should be noodle unpaired. Um, R is case sensitive, so if you uh, miss out any letter, um, uppercase, lowercase, it matters as well. So in this case, it should be saved as noodle unpaired. U is capital, yeah. Okay, I got it right this time. And I hit import. Okay, all right, so it changed the name correctly. All right, I imported it already. I'm not going to use this comment, so I'll comment it out. I'm going to use this library. It's already loaded. Let's do the first thing first, right? So let's take a look at the describe function to see the basic statistics here. Um, in this case, I do have version A customer IDs and version B customer IDs. I don't really need them. If you don't really need them, you just need to call 
um, the columns that you are really interested in working on. So in this case, I am interested in working on version A clicks versus version B clicks. You can call um, their names, right? Uh, in a vector format inside the data frame like this. Um, so in this case, yeah, it is much easier to see it. So as you can see, version B clicks is higher, the average is higher and the median is higher. This is still not uh, really a statistically significant difference. I don't know it yet. Uh, that's why I'm going to check that. But I just, if I just compare the mean and median, I do see a significant um, difference here. But based on our statistical test, we are going to be able to say whether the difference is statistically significant or not. First thing first, we need to do um, look at the normality of these data sets, right? So we do have QQ norm and QQ line, the same functions that I used to work on my one sample t-test. Um, so what I do is I call QQ norm, noodle, unpaired. This is the name of the data frame. And if you use the dollar sign, it's going to call the column version A clicks, right? And let's run this, execute it. Um, it brings up my normal QQ plot. And if you line, if you run QQ line plot, it is going to draw a regression line or a, it is going to add a trend line to your, your plot. So it looks like a pencil would cover all, almost all my points here. So I will just say that this passes normality test. Let's do work on version B clicks. Um, and they do also you know, uh, follow along this, this trend line. Um, okay, so my conclusion would be these two version clicks, they follow normal probability distribution. If you would like to reach out your previously drawn um, plots, you can do it like this. You can zoom into it, you can export it, you can save them uh, to wherever you want. Okay, uh, let's do the test. All right, so let's go back to um, my, my problem. I'm asked to work on noodle unpaired uh, data and I'm trying to see if the mean number of clicks came to me uh, with this version A is larger than or less than uh, the mean number of clicks that came to me by version B. Version B is the new, new, um, new proposed system and version A is the, the status quo. Okay, so uh, if I need to put, define them like this, like me A is the number of clicks made on version A and me B is the number of clicks made on version B, the status quo is, I can set it up like this, is I can basically say that those are equal to each other, right? There is no difference between the two versions. And the alternative one would be the challenge. It basically tells me that there is a difference between me A and me B. So this is a two-sided, okay, unpaired test, t-test, and let's see how we can do it in, in R. So I create an object um, and uh, this object's name or the variable's name is two-sided, two-sample t-test unpaired. It's a very long one. Uh, again, the name doesn't matter as long as you use the name you know, correctly in other places, you can change this name. But the t.test is going to be the function, the name of the function that we are going to be using. In this case, if it is two-sample t-test, um, so what you put in the first part of the parentheses is mu a. So in this case, mu a is uh, version a clicks, right? The version a clicks is stored in version a clicks column of this uh, data frame. And version b clicks is also stored in the same data frame, but in this time version b clicks column. The test is two-sided. Right, I have to put it in the alternative spot. So the alternative hypothesis is um, two-sided, not equals to. And the R um, concept for that not equals to is two-sided in text format. Put a comma, confidence level, we just say that it is 95%. Is this data paired? I put false, it's not paired, okay? Uh, if your um, computer gives you problem with this false statement, you may want to use just the F uh, letter, right? Sometimes some computers do that. I'm not sure why, uh, but um, the complete false term works out just fine on my Mac. Okay, uh, let's run this. 
Okay, it gives the, 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 the task perform its, uh, its operations. So let's visualize it by running line 22. You do have the Welch two sample t test. So that's what R implements uh, behind the scene. And I do have the T statistics. Uh, I don't know the critical region, so I can't tell uh, anything by looking at the T statistics. But when you look at the P value, P value, this is 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 16, which makes this a very, this is the scientific term, uh, scientific representation of this number. It's a very small number. It can be literally equal to zero. Well, it's not zero, but it's a very small number. And it is definitely less than 0 0.05. My conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis, right? So I reject this in favor of this one. Basically, the alternative hypothesis tells me that mu a is not equal to mu b. Um, and mu a is the number of clicks that I received through version A of the website is not really equal to um, the number of clicks that I received from version B, okay? Um, that's what I concluded by running a two-sided, two-sample t-test. Well, is this a useful information? Well, let's think a little bit. Um, am I trying to decide if there's any difference between these two, or am I trying to decide which one is better? Okay, yes, I'm definitely trying to see which one is better, right? So actually, this test was not really good for me, right? Um, yes, there is a significant difference between these two, but which one is better? It does not answer that question. Therefore, I should be modifying my test by putting in either less than or greater than sign here. So that if I reject or fail to reject this null hypothesis, then I can go back and see which one is better. Or if there is any statistical uh, significant difference between the two. Okay, so I modified it. I put less than here, basically, this alternative tells me that mu a version a clicks is less than mu b version b clicks. If I reject the null hypothesis, then I would be claiming that my data suggests that version a clicks is statistically less than version b clicks. Therefore, I can freely switch to version b. I would be feeling much better adopting the new website. This is still unpaired data again. I am just using a different test. This time, this is not a two-sided test. This time it is a one-sided t-test. And let's see how we can do it in R. So that is uh, located on line 25. Two-sided, two-sample t-test, unpaired. That's what I call it. Um, well, actually, yeah, this was the, you know, the previous test. And then I was just showing that you can um, call the statistic, t-statistic, two-sided, two-sample t-test p-value, and also the confidence interval values by um, reaching the columns of the data frame that I, I just created. Um, okay, so the new test, one-sided, two-sample t-test unpaired is actually starting uh, from line 34. As I said, this is just a name. It's a long name. You can just shorten it the way that you want. Um, the important thing is you should be um, using the same name if you'd like to refer to this test. Um, let's go back to what I already proposed. So I'm going to change the alternative hypothesis test from not equals to the symbol not equals to less than. Um, and the way that I do it, everything else is going to stay the same. I'm still comparing the version A clicks versus version B clicks. Alternative this time, instead of using two-sided, I am using less, okay? And my confidence interval is going to stay the same, and this is not paired. Uh, therefore, the paired uh, section is going to be false. Let's run this. Uh, and let's see, let's take a look at the p value. The p value is suggesting again the same small p value. It is again telling me that I should reject the null hypothesis. So if I do reject the null hypothesis in favor of h1, it is literally telling me that the version B clicks is statistically significantly larger than the version A clicks. Then my test is basically telling me that, yeah, go ahead and that version B, okay? All right, um, you can look at the confidence interval as well. So the mu A minus mu B, um, the 95% confidence interval is starting from minus infinity all the way up to minus 15. 
this is not including zero. So that's a good sign that uh, the difference is on the negative side, it's, which is basically telling me that version B clicks is um, statistically significantly larger. Um, and then you can also see the mean of X and mean of Y. Okay. All right, so the unpaired uh, data set claims that um, version B is getting me more clicks. Um, what about the paired data? So, well, again, the first thing, if I would like to work on the paired data set, if I would like to do A-B testing on the paired data, I should be first checking to see whether the data is coming from a normal probability distribution. Um, let's do it. Um, so I, the instructions tell me that I should be importing this new nodal paired sheet under a new data frame. I could go ahead and import data set and browse. So here again, the same data, data but different sheet nodal paired this time. And the instructions tell me that I should name it nodal paired. So I will just come over here with capital P. I change the name from noodle to noodle paired. And I hit import. So it imported a new data set. This time I do have customer ID version A clicks and version B clicks. This is paired data. So same customer is working on version A and version B and doing the clicks. Um, you could also run this code with changing, uh, with a changed uh, directory of this file. But since I did not need it, I will comment it out. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the describe function of it. Again, I don't really need the customer ID. So I exclude it here on the second version on line 48. I do see the differences between mean and standard deviations and median, but we are, cannot be really sure without doing any statistical test. First of all, let's do the normality test with the QQ norm and QQ line on both version A and version B clicks. Version A clicks uh, showing me that, yeah, although I do have some deviations, those are not really here or here. So I can fairly say that, you know, this data is coming from normal probability distribution. Let's run the version B clicks. Um, although I do see a clear outliers here, um, I, do, I do also accept it as normal probability distribution. Um, those are not really wild outliers like here or here or here. Um, with a thick pencil, I can cover most of the most of the data points. Um, okay. So how do I do this test? So let me go back to my test. So um, my claim is still the same, but this time on a different data set. Uh, and the data set, the way that the data was collected was different, and that's paired data. But my test is not going to change. My uh, my H0 and my, my H1 is not going to change at all. And what is going to change here is under the t-test. So again, I named it differently. You can name it whatever you want. Um, whatever is changing, well, actually the data that I'm calling is going to be changed. This time it is noodle paired data frame, version A clicks and version B clicks. Um, and alternative is less. Confidence level is 0 0.95, but the paired section will become true. Um, I'm basically telling R that uh, this is a paired data. Go ahead and call the right test for it and then give me the results, okay? So again, if true, the term is giving you a problem, you can just change it to T, it should work, uh, but just in case, all right? Let's execute this line. Come and then return, and then come and then return one more time to see the result of the test. Um, P value is 1.083 times 10 to the minus of 12. It is almost zero again. Um, it is less than the alpha value. Then my conclusion is uh, I should reject the null hypothesis. I should reject the null hypothesis in favor of H1 which also suggests that a version B clicks is giving me a larger number compared to version A clicks. So I should use the new version, okay? All right, so that is how you could do two sample t-test paired unpaired data in R. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at the chi-square test for independence.